Welcome to this WiseL tutorial. In this fairly short video, we're going to look at how to use with statements in Excel VBA. So we'll begin the video with a quick look at how to write a very simple with statement and give you a couple of reasons why that might be useful. We'll then move on and show you how to create slightly more complex references in your with statements and finish the video with a look at how you can reference other objects within a with statement. So there isn't really all that much to do, but let's get started. In VBA, a with statement is a great way to avoid having to refer to the same object multiple times. A very common example of where they're used is when you're trying to apply lots of different formatting options to the same range of cells. So for this example, what we're going to do is apply lots of different formatting options to our list of film release dates, so everything from cell C3 to C15. So to get started with that, I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I've begun a new subroutine called Format Film Release Dates, and the first thing I'd like to do maybe is change the background colour of the cells. So I'd have to start by referring to range C3 to C15, assuming that I'm on the correct worksheet of course, followed by a full stop, and then I said I wanted to change the background colour, so that's the interior dot colour, and I'm going to make it equal to, let's see, RGB Aquamarine, for the sake of argument, and that's the first property that I've changed. Now, if I wanted to change another formatting property of that range of cells, I'd have to start the next instruction with the same reference, range C3 to C15, followed by another full stop, and then move on to the next property. Now, the with statement allows us to avoid having to enter this reference at the start of each instruction. So here's how it works. If I just remove that reference, I'm going to break this line in two. I'm going to put the dot interior dot color on a separate line. Then, in front of the reference to range C3 to C15, I'm going to enter the word with. Down below the property that I've changed, I'm going to enter the statement end with, because every with has to end at some point, so you must have an end with statement to go along with a with statement. Then, just for a nice layout feature, I'm going to indent this dot interior dot color line within the with statement. Now, the brilliant thing from this point is that in between with and end with, should I want to do anything to range C3 to C15? All I need to do is begin my instruction with a full stop, and I see the full list of properties and methods of that range. So I can go for things like, let's say, font.color perhaps, and make that equal to, I don't know, RGB red, maybe? And I could say dot font.size equals 12, I could say all sorts of different things, so I can just carry on changing all the formatting properties of this block of cells. Let's change the number format as well. I'll change the number format so that the date is formatted slightly differently. Let's say um, 40s, couple more Ds, 3Ms, and 4Ys. Okay, so if we can just resize our screen so we can see at least some of the dates in the background, and then I step through this subroutine using the F8 key line by line, we'll see that each time I execute a line, it happens to that block of cells. So it's not very surprising, um, but it's a nice convenient way to shorten your code. just realized I haven't made my column quite wide enough to display the dates. But there we go, that's what that format comes out as. So the four Ds give us the full name of the day of the week, the two Ds give us the number of the day of the month. The three M's give us a short name for the month, and finally the four Y's give us the, the, the full year. So there's the basics of using a with statement. Now I think if statements become more useful, the more complex this original reference is. So in our first example, we set a fixed range of cells, C3 to C15. But what if we weren't sure exactly how long this list was going to be? We'd know where it starts in cell C3, but we wouldn't know where it would end. That would require a slightly more complex reference to the range of cells. And if I go back to the VB editor, here's how, well, here's one way in which I could do that. So I could say range C3, comma, range C2, dot end, Excel down. Okay, so that's a slightly more complex reference to a range of cells, which goes from, from cell C3 down to whichever cell is at the end of the list from cell C2 in a downwards direction. Um, two reasons this is the width statement is really useful because obviously entering that at the start of each phrase, each instruction, will be really, really tedious. Lots of potential for spelling mistakes and typos, missing commas and double quotes and so on. And also, if 
Excel does not have to evaluate that condition every single time we try to change a formatting property of that range of cells. The code will be more efficient as well. So this, this statement is evaluated just once when the with statement begins. So it does exactly the same job as before, obviously. If I just quickly switch back into Excel and maybe clear the formats from that block, let's use the clear formats button. Oops, I got rid of the date formats as well. Actually, that doesn't matter because my, my code will format my dates in the appropriate way anyway. So back to the VB editor, and if I step through the routine again, using F8 line by line, we'll see that all the same things happen to the full list of films. And this time it wouldn't matter how long the list was. We can take this process even further than that. So we can extend this reference as far as we like. So let's imagine, for example, that we didn't necessarily know that we were going to be on sheet one when we formatted our film's release dates. We can make that work by extending this reference to include the reference to the worksheet that our cells are on. So we can say at the start of this sentence, worksheets sheet one dot range C3, and I'd also need to include that in fact, if I just copy this, cheating a little bit I know, um, I need to include that in front of the reference to range C2 as well. So the full statement, the full width statement, will reference a range of cells that will potentially be on a completely different worksheet to the one in which we're working. Can't quite squeeze the full phrase on screen just about, there we go. So from range C3 on worksheet one to range C2 down to the end of the list on worksheet one. And again, the advantage is not having to enter this reference at the start of every single instruction makes the code much neater and more efficient as well. So just to reassure you that it does actually work, let me quickly go back and clear the formats again. And then let's make sure we go to a different worksheet, sheet three this time. When I, I'm just gonna run the subroutine from start to finish using the run button or press the F5 key on the keyboard. And then going back to sheet one, we'll find that the same range of cells have been formatted again. So you can create really, really complex extended references with a with statement that will save you an enormous amount of time when you're writing your code. Just as one final technical point about with statements, although they're designed to allow you to work with the same object on each instruction, there actually isn't anything to stop you from referring to other objects within the with statement. So let's say, just arbitrarily for the sake of argument, that after we change the colour of our cells that we've referred to on sheet one, we wanted to change the background color of all of the cells on worksheet three to match the same color. Um, it's a bit of a silly example, but just to demonstrate the principle that if I wanted to do something to another object within my with statement, I can still fully qualify a reference to that object. Um, so I can say worksheets sheet three. So notice there's no full stop at the start of this instruction. So worksheet sheet three dot cells dot interior dot color equals, and I could say RGB aquamarine, of course, just as I've done in the previous line. Alternatively, I could say dot interior dot color, which is quite interesting. So that allows me to, re to rely on the, the, the width statement to read the interior color property of that range of cells and set the interior color property of cells on a completely different worksheet. So if I just execute that subroutine um, by clicking play and switch back into Excel. If I switch onto sheet three, there we go. All the cells are now aquamarine. So it's a bit of a silly example, but just as a technical point to reassure you that you can refer to other objects within a with statement as long as you fully qualify them. So that's the end of this fairly short video. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.